Hello. Good morning, everyone. Good Welcome. morning. Okay. Uh, participants, please mute yourselves. Uh, Hello, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the welcome to day two of the online presentation of the cohort two of Fifty Two Perinde Fellowship, where our fellows will be sharing their learnings, reflections, and insights from their fellowship journey in their chosen areas of explorations. Hi, uh, my name is Ashik Krishnan, and I'm a Travelers University. At Travelers University, uh, we design and facilitate various travel-based and experiential learning programs, ranging from week-long learning journeys to uh, six-month-long fellowships. In the, these programs are in the intersecting or intersecting areas of education, ecology, economics, and social justice. Three aspects that we focus on in our journeys are connection with one's own self, connection with the community around, and connection with the rest of nature. The 52 Parinde Fellowship Program uh, is a program for youth intended. The 52 Parinde Fellowship Program is a program for youth who are in the pursuit of livelihoods, livelihoods oriented towards social, ecological, and personal well being. Through the fellowship, the fellows meet with different alive practitioners in their chosen areas of interests, people who have already walked these paths, people who are already working in those areas and they engage with them, involved in their work, thus having a direct learning experience for themselves. The journey of the current cohort started on August 1st, 2022 at Sutlingi Valley in Tamil Nadu, where we had our two weeks of orientation at a space co-hosted by Tribal Health Initiative and Sutlingi Organic Farmers Association. After which the fellows set off on their individual journeys for about four to four and a half months, where they where they learned uh, from initiatives uh, and people who are directly working on ground at grassroots levels. We are currently hosting our reflection workshop at Proto Village in Andhra Pradesh, and today we have the second set of presentations where our fellows share their learnings and insights from their journey. So uh, the first fellow who will be presenting today is Smriti. Smriti is from Ghaziabad, Uttar Pradesh, and her area of exploration during the fellowship was women empowerment, cultivation of feminist values. Smriti identifies herself as a feminist and feels strongly about the issues around gender, patriarchy, and women's rights. She was born and brought up in Ghaziabad, Uttar Pradesh. Prior to the fellowship, she was a software engineer by profession. Um, and she believes that the world can do without one less software, but not without the mutual concentration among its residents. She wants to put her energy and time in the work which aligns with her value system and one which is meaningful to both to her and as well as society. Smriti is currently on a gap year and uh, has taken a journey of exploration and experimentation. As a woman, she has often noticed disparities and sexism, even in spaces considered progressive and has been vocal about women's rights and empowerment. As a 52 Parinde fellow, Smriti traveled to urban and rural spaces in different states of India to understand the issues and work around women empowerment as well as what feminism is for her and how she can contribute towards the cause. Reflecting upon her experience on the journey, she plans to explore practical ways to address the need of a mindset shift to paint a feminist future while also continuing the journey of self-exploration and expression that the fellowship has set her on. So that is uh, Smriti's journey, uh, the path 
across India. She traveled that you see on the screen. And welcoming Smriti to share by herself. Yes, Smriti. Um, thanks, Ashik. Thanks a lot for such a wonderful introduction. Uh, um, good morning, everyone. Um, I would like to start by expressing my gratitude uh, to all of you um, for joining in on a Saturday morning. Um, so thanks a lot. Thank you all. Um, so we'll be moving ahead in the presentation. Uh, Ashik, could you go to the next slide? Yes. So um, I would like to start my presentation with this quote. Um, and I wrote this uh, somewhere in the middle of my journey uh, because of the experiences I was getting and the things I was getting to see. Um, so, um, so I would read it out loud once. I don't know how to put on paper or on camera the things my eyes have seen, the beauty and the pain. Um, so, so throughout this journey, I have seen a, quite a lot of things and I tried my best uh, to put it on uh, the stories that we have been writing, my reflections also, and this presentation also. And I hope I can uh, paint a picture for all of you. Um, and this photograph is there in the background. Uh, this is a window as we can all see. And the the this uh, symbolism for me because uh, this fellowship has been uh, for me has been a window to a whole set of different ideas uh, a different kind of life um, a whole new world uh, to to say uh, yeah so uh, so the very first question um, arises that why women empowerment um, so for me, women empowerment has like the issues around women and uh, gender and all of this has been very close to my heart. So when, when uh, I had to think uh, of what I would like to explore uh, and go deeper into, so I asked myself this question, uh, what is the one issue that makes you cry? And up came women empowerment and the issues around women uh, um, and so uh, i knew that this is this is my journey i have to uh, take this uh, journey um so for uh, me uh, women empowerment is also about a fight for fundamentals um and basically humanizing women uh, because uh, cause of the stereotypes around women um are uh, like we kind of have dehumanized uh, them in in a way, uh, uh, sometimes putting them on a pedestal, sometimes uh, you know not considering them enough. So I think it is it is a fight for fundamentals and it is it is a fight for humanity, and um, and so I feel women empowerment is very very uh, important for me. Um, it is also uh, because of the many influences of uh, empowered women in my life, especially my mother. Uh, because of such women in my life, I could uh, I could see what a woman is uh, uh, without the um, uh, stereotypes around the gender. I could see uh, the human. Uh, that my mother was uh, is and every quality and everything without the filter of a, uh, of the, the stereotype around the gender and um, because of which i could get an idea that this that this is how women are and the stereotypes are limiting them um, so i am very grateful for uh, such women in my life and uh, also because in my life so far, uh, through like I have been uh, through traditional education, and then I got into a job, and I have been doing that. I was in the IT, so there. Uh, so even 
like in every space i i have an urban childhood so in every space uh spaces which are considered progressive there also i could clearly see disparities and sexism and uh, sometimes hidden sometimes uh, you know out there so that really bothered me and uh, i could not help but notice it and want to change it and do something about it so so yes that's that's why women empowerment uh, is my my area of exploration in this journey yeah. okay so um so i'll read this out loud once and uh, so we are constantly trying to balance out our surroundings this is how our subconscious seems to be wired we take forms sometimes forms we do not recognize sometimes the ones we beg to do a part with and somehow each form we take is true no matter how jarringly different they might be from each other so who are you are you a response are you the should be what are you attuned to who are you out and away from all any and every context so so this i wrote um, somewhere uh, somewhere in the middle of my journey and uh, it was it it was just something uh, it was to articulate something which has been there in me for a very very really long time and this was related to myself my views my thoughts my capabilities and my ideas and who am i uh, in isolation and in in a social uh, circle and in various different contexts um so for for that to happen i needed to identify who i am um, um without any context at all um so with this uh, the search of self and search of uh, uh and the will and the need and the um desire to understand more and in depth about whatever work is being done for women empowerment and um the challenges and the issues around it so with with these two things these two themes in my mind i set out on a journey of a lifetime and uh, and that's what i would uh, take you all through uh, uh, ashik can you please go to the next slide yeah so for me uh, like this journey that i set out for was about exploration and introspection so exploration about all of these things that you are seeing um on the uh, on your screen so uh, it was about exploration of self of capabilities interests dreams creative inclination i um, i got the opportunity to explore all of it in great detail um and i think i have a good sense of uh, myself and uh, what what uh, inspires me and what uh, trick uh, like what makes me uh, go deeper into my creative expression and uh, so this uh, this was one of the areas of exploration which which was very uh, beneficial for me that which it enriched my uh, self and uh, the second was uh, world people communities because um, so till now Hello, Stuti. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Can the audience hear at this moment? I think so. Yes, yes, yes. You can go on, Stuti. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um. So yeah. So uh, that was something. Uh, like the I had plenty of chance and plenty of opportunity to explore in the journey. 
and uh, then there was uh, landscapes different landscapes i uh, got to uh, be part of uh, geographies cultures language and uh, so i uh, as we could see in the map i had been to uh, a lot of diverse uh, spaces and that really contributed to this exploration and uh, so that was that was that and then definitely uh, the the question i had around women empowerment and uh, my interest in it so i got uh, a lot like i explored it a lot gender patriarchy women empowerment um there is so much work being done in this area and i got ex- uh, i was exposed to all of that and i was exposed to different stories of the people on the ground and so that uh, that was well explored for me then definitely different intersections intersections within uh, within feminism and intersections um in different social issues that that are there uh intersections within myself also um so yeah so that was well explored for me then there was a lot of introspection that was happening a lot of reflection that was happening and i was uh i was in a space uh, and i was in a constant state of introspection throughout the journey i was uh, uh thinking and feeling and uh, trying to make sense of things both outside and within and uh, different ideas approaches my approaches uh, my inhibitions that i i really got to uh, get face to face with those inhibitions that i had and uh got to understand uh, uh and try to uh, move o- like move over them and definitely interactions how i am with interactions uh, uh that has always been a challenging part for me but uh, uh this i i could very well think deep about this in this journey and definitely values uh, uh my value system and so i was able to get into my own value system a lot um a practice which uh, generally in in a normal uh, uh, you know in a mainstream uh, life in the in the race that we are in we do not g- uh, give it a thought as much so that also so all of this this whole uh, whatever you are seeing on the screen this is what uh, my journey was all about um yeah so ashik we can move to the next slide so on this journey uh, i met a lot of people and ex- uh, received a lot of love gave a lot of love so there was a uh, exchange of so much good energy and uh, each each person whom i met and each person who made me feel connected uh, and belonged in a space where where i was completely uh, a stranger a completely new space for me so i'm thankful to all of them uh and that that kept me uh, going on uh, in this solo exploration that i had um so so the the picture that you are seeing the first uh, the second picture in the first row that you are seeing uh so that is that is from uh, so i was traveling uh, for our orientation so my journey so everyone in the fellowship uh, jokes that your journey began way before the actual travel part of the fellowship began uh because when i was traveling to the orientation so because of uh, there was a delay in the train and uh, and because of that i had to miss uh, my morning bus there were there were two buses that uh, that were there for the location i needed to go to uh, catch the evening bus and now there was i had 5 6 hours in my hand and no place to go so uh, so i met um, uncle and auntie and they were like in my coach um, and they offered to take me to their home and they uh, they welcomed me with a uh, nice tamilian uh, food uh, and they offered me a bed to sleep and they even came with me to uh, help me board the bus and even talk to because there was a, because language was a problem so they 
they uh, talked to the uh, bus conductor that she she cannot speak tamil and uh, so you have to uh, drop her at this exact location please remember and all of that was happening i felt like i am their daughter and uh, then they uh, they also uh, like found a woman uh, and uh, like we we friended me with uh, with her and sat me next to her and said that okay uh, you both uh, stay together and because that woman also had to uh, step uh, like board off uh, at that location where i was going so um, so it was a very beautiful experience completely unexpected um, i did not expect it and uh, it will always remain in my heart in my memories and whenever i feel um, a bit uh, sad about uh, about how the world feels sometimes i will always remember this incident i this, this incident uh, is like makes me want to uh believe in the good in people uh so yes that was that was one experience and then uh there's so many such experiences so many such people you were seeing a whole uh collage of people and all of them and there were many more um uh, so the picture that you are seeing on the uh, end of the first column so that so i was in uh, the gender lab mumbai so that was my first location so all the fellows um, of the gender lab so they have a fellowship uh, program and i i was i got to be friends with the fellows and um, so one of the fellows um, akshita uh, so she asked me to come to uh, her house for a dinner and she wanted to make fish curry and uh, uh fish fry for me so i went with her and i also i made a uh, bottle gourd and i i made rotis with her and it was a very nice exchange and everyone came and we were having a good time and i felt very connected to the space and i i felt like i belong uh and that is a huge thing when you are traveling solo uh the picture that you are seeing uh, like uh, where i am sitting with a with an uncle and i am having lunch so that picture uh, so i was hungry and i didn't want to uh, buy food from the train uh, so and i did not ask anything but without me asking uh, this uncle he he offered me to share he offered to share lunch with me and we had a nice conversation and uh, it was it was beautiful actually uh so yeah so all of these things will remain with me and would make me constantly trust in the good in people um as you can see um, a dog with me so and uh, like two pictures are with a dog so uh, i got i received a lot of love from dogs as well um so yeah it was a whole uh, feel good uh, aspect of the journey um yeah and and then there were so many experiences um and there are only few that you can see on the screen uh, i got to i visited so many different villages uh, i uh, got to interact with so many people uh, from rural urban every kind of um, <clears throat> uh, background and uh, i got to know their story uh, first hand and uh, that was really important for me uh because that gave me a true sense of what what is going on um and um, i i got to interact with children with women with men uh with everyone um and and these interactions were happening these experiences were uh, uh, i was experiencing all of this and amidst all of this there was a lot of fun also happening uh, so um uh, and the experiences and the incidents i would definitely go deeper into in the uh, like in the presentation as we progress so so yeah so this this will remain in my memory always uh yes ashik we can go to the next slide yeah so in my journey as you have seen uh, uh in the map that was shared initially i i went to different uh, like six locations and um, and in all those locations locations from all those locations like each each uh, parinde uh, as you can see their names on the slide so 
each parinde was like a like a piece in a jigsaw puzzle for me uh like whatever learnings and realizations i had even if a single i would have to take out a single one then also then it would it would not uh, be a holistic one it would not be a complete learning because i learned so much so much throughout the journey and uh, so much uh, looking at the work that was being done the team that was executing it the no uh, parinde their ideologies and uh, the beneficiaries of the programs that they had uh, and so i would like to go deeper into some of the learnings that i uh, had uh, um, so <clears throat> um so there is so i'll go with the first one so i i realized that uh, in a work like this um, personal um, there is a there is no clear difference between personal and professional because every story that comes to you feels very very personal um and and like feminism is a way of life and it, you cannot just limit it to to your work it seeps into your personal life and and you lead a you lead a feminist life and uh, that was that was a very uh, big realization for me because um it it made me realize that i could start with myself um uh, and uh, uh then i got to know about uh like empowerment and how how empowerment has different levels i um so i i realized that i was looking at all all the things that was that were going on from a uh, from a privileged standpoint uh, and when i when i realized that i got to know that empowerment itself is a spectrum it has a it has different level and what might be very basic for for some one um, it could be life changing for another so so that was a huge realization for me because that that really led me to look at even small small things and uh, do them in a way that could uh, that would align with uh with the whole scheme of things um then and then i learned that it begins with you um that that whatever uh, like it is it is both liberating and grounding uh to give way to your own voice because when you do that you are and especially as a woman when you do that you are uh you are kind of initiating a, a revolution against the challenges which uh, which fam- feminism is trying to address um and and that that's how you just just one it's a ripple effect ripple effect you you just begin with yourself and then every everything starts coming into picture uh then um, i learned that everyone is a stakeholder uh so i i learned that uh, the the women that that hopefully will be empowered uh, through our uh, efforts are going to live on this planet on this very planet among these very people um and and hence everyone needs to uh, build an understanding of how to live with empowered women so it's not a it's it's not a one side thing we have to address it holistically and uh, and uh, like across across every uh, across genders across caste every section uh, we have to address uh, this we have to uh, do a combined effort into uh, painting a feminist future and uh, uh, especially uh, with men uh, if we like we need to start conversations such that they uh, they start acknowledging uh, the power dynamics that are there in their uh, that exist and that are there in their relationships also uh, like personal professional any kind of relationship and uh, and we just we need to uh, make people aware of uh, uh, like especially men about uh uh how the ideas of masculinity uh, affects them as well as 
the rest of the society and uh, enough for them to question it every step of the way uh because then questioning would lead to uh, uh clarifications that would lead to reflections and uh, and i believe that conversations questions reflections these are key uh, for a change like that to bring about a change like that um so uh so yeah and then um i realized uh, the importance of desires dreams hopes and uh, role models in the community so i'll i'll share an incident um i was visiting um a, a, a like a semi urban space um and um, it was it was a basti and i was interacting with women there and most of them were single women so the, the program was a for single women uh and i was interacting with them and i i got in conversations with their uh, daughters and i saw that the daughters uh, it was very upsetting for me to see that because the daughters did not want to go to study and that is definitely that, that could definitely one of the um uh you know bad effects of the traditional education system that that could be one uh but i was i was see looking at it at a uh, from a broader perspective and i saw that uh, despite um, despite witnessing that what all their mothers are going through because of a lack of education independence um uh, they still did not want to go to study so then i i inquired more and i wanted to understand it better i realized that um that we uh we as a society are failing at a like at a at a soul level um uh, we need to uh, you know sing and generate a, and sing about opportunities in the most marginalized uh, of life we need to um uh bring out uh possibilities and and we need to ignite uh desires dreams hopes and especially role models through role models in the most underprivileged of homes because when when that happens uh, when a role model is there or uh, when anything triggers dream or desire um then then there is a will to do something because there is hope that this can be done otherwise uh there is for for a lot of people out there in the world there is complete blank complete uh, a black slate in front of their eyes because we as a society have uh, oppressed them so much that they do not uh, uh it is very difficult for them to look beyond that um uh and uh, and uh, and the oppression continues um so yeah so that i realized that it was very important even if the desires or dreams are as uh, frivolous as um, like whatever the society considers frivolous even in that desire or dream i would really very much want uh, to be united in such homes um yeah so there was that and then there was this uh, learning that uh, any social issue does not exist in isolation um so there's this incident i want to share so i was in um, i was around hyderabad in the rural spaces um uh, in devalkonda and there i met a lot of women on the field and uh, there was this one woman she had recently lost her husband uh, she had two children and both of them were uh, not well they were suffering from some uh, diseases and uh, she had no uh, means of uh, she had no land uh, so no means of uh, earning anything and uh, it was she was struggling a lot and there i realized how every social issue is interlinked it is it does not exist in isolation whatever she was suffering um uh, the her suffering was Uh, for, because of a lot of things acting in uh, acting together the lack of proper health care systems in the rural spaces a lack of um, uh, employment uh, options in the rural spaces her, her identity as a single woman uh, in 
in a space um, like that uh, she was uh, facing a lot of trouble from her uh, uh, in-laws family also um, regarding the land acquisition and so i realized that um, we when we address one issue we cannot we cannot just look at that we have to look at everything and then come up with a solution which could which could also support the other issues uh, so that was that was a that was very important a very key learning for me um, then i realized importance of context uh, i'll share this uh, incident so i was in the in in another another basti in madhya pradesh uh, so i so there was this uh, mother daughter and they had a, they had a small home for themselves and uh, and uh, they were uh, they had height impairment and uh, they so, so so everyone in the village even in the basti uh, like because there is this uh, understanding in the society that a man has to be there in, in a in a house in a home and then it will be complete and then it would be safe right so um, the basti asked the mother to marry off the daughter and uh, so they married her to 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 a guy and who who started living with them in their house and as as he uh, like got married he stopped going to work and now the women having their physical issues and the health issues that were that they were facing they had to work twice because now they had to feed three people and one of them who had a, a king's lifestyle <laughs> um uh, so so i so, so the mother uh, was sharing and she was crying and she was sharing with me how uh, like they go to work and they come back and they cook uh, from the meal for for the uh, for the guy and you know, give him uh, and and wash it, wash their wash his clothes and all of that so um and and the, the guy uh, abuses them and does not go to work and 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 you know just the so things that he he is there and nothing can be done about it and he he is going to he can do whatever he wants uh so so i asked the mother that uh so if if it is bothering like it is obviously a, a big issue for you because your health is also deteriorating your daughter's health is also deteriorating because of the extra work that you have to do then why not try uh, so i i proposed i i just said that um, if i request you could you could you stop serving him uh, food uh, for the next 10 days uh, and and washing his clothes and all of that i i i told i explained to her that uh in the first three days he would uh, we would be like i can do it myself and he'll do it and the next uh, few days he could you know uh, be angry and all of that and at the end maybe he'll, he there will be a space for dialogue and then you can uh, set your terms right with with that person so 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 irrespective of whether the solution was good or not or whether the proposal uh, was uh, uh, how the proposal was what what really uh, uh like surprising not surprising but what really was very uh uh key observation here was that uh, the mother had a had a weird smile on her face when i was saying this and i i could understand why that was it was looking very uh, weird it was it was whatever she was hearing that not not uh, serving food to to the man in the house and washing his clothes so that seemed very weird to her uh and she said she talked about how allah would be seeing all of that if she does that and i shared that like allah would be looking at him also so i was not trying to have a you know uh, a, a kind of a debate with her i was trying to uh bring out things from her uh, uh and her her inhibitions so these were her inhibitions and um, and i didn't have to speak to her uh, her her smile the weird smile which she had was enough for me to understand uh, and and there i realized the importance of context um so so even the proposal and solutions we offered uh, 
they are not in isolation from the context that is there in that space uh, and uh, it was uh, it was painful for me to hold back um, and to, to witness that but i understood uh, that the the whole context was what was speaking there uh, so yeah so these are some of my uh, learnings um, and yeah ashik uh, you could you can move to the next slide so there is uh, so, so these were my learnings but something which was like very key uh, very key understanding and a very key analysis which i had uh, in the whole journey and uh, it answered a lot of things for me uh, uh, when i when i got to that uh, ob uh, uh, that conclusion sort of so and i think it is very important to share here so so before i go into that i would like to share some incident uh, so in my journey um, i met many many spirited um you know full of life women and and there was one such woman whom i spent a lot of time with she she is younger than me um so and uh, the the courage the great and the uh, life she had in her was so inspiring and so i talked to her about her future and what she is planning and all of that and 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 what does she think about marriage because that was a huge concern for her and in her society uh, in her community uh, so she shared with me that um, that uh, i want to do this 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 but let's see if if my husband if i get a good husband uh, an understanding husband then that would be possible otherwise then what what can i do and it broke me uh, to hear that um because uh, because a woman, a girl like her full of so much so full of life so many abilities and capabilities she had i could see uh, without even having to take an interview uh, and and hearing that from her and uh, and it it felt like she was in a jail uh, she was in a prison uh, that that's how it looked to me and that prison uh is uh, the 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 base of the prison has been uh, set out uh, from years and years and generations and generations and all of us have a have a role in that uh, um and like how her thoughts have been shaped and how the community forces their thoughts on her and uh, and and no one is individually at blame here uh it's it's the whole scheme of patriarchy which which really like how uh, like patriarchy is a system and it is there very much there in every every step of the way in every aspect of our lives no matter where you are who you are uh um, yeah so another such uh, uh, incident was um, so i went to this uh Uh, hostel or girls hostel where uh, girls from underprivileged uh, homes uh, stay they uh, they have their education there and uh, so it was it was again in uh, uh, devakonda uh, so i i saw like when they saw me they the first question was um, uh, how are you so fearless akka and and i was like i'm i'm anything but fearless um so so they they said that they fear to even get out of the gate and, and that that spoke something to me um so and, and another such incident uh, there was we were meeting a group of young girls adolescent girls uh, in a in a village and there so all of them were there and and we were having a conversation about women empowerment and about how what are their daily struggles and um, all of that and their faces spoke volumes uh, their uh, they had there was anger sadness and helplessness these three things i could identify and that's not how how women in our society as young as them should be 
le leading their lives. And one girl who was in eighth standard, she asked me this question, which which still stays with me, and uh, uh, and it was, uh, um, Akka, uh, do you don't you have pressure of marriage, and uh, what what can we do about that? She is an eighth standard, and if in eighth standard a girl has to think about the pressures of marriage, I'm sorry, we are failing as a society. Uh, that's what came to my mind so so yeah so these were some incidences uh, which was which were very uh, like which spoke volumes to me and there was this workshop we were doing uh, uh, with uh, uh, with one of my parinde uh, anand pawar uh, uh, from samyak pune so, so he had a uh, uh, workshop in bihar uh, about around masculinity gender Patriarchy with with the men, uh, uh, and uh, there, so we had some statements which we, we were asked, which we were just putting out there uh, in the beginning of the workshop, and uh, and people who agreed to it had to move in in one direction, and did not agree to it had to move in another direction. So there was one statement. Uh, uh, it, it's in Hindi. I'll I'll uh, say it. Uh, so. Uh, मर्द वो ही होता है जो अपनी औरत को मुट्ठी में रखता है एंड 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 दीज मैन आर वेरी स्मार्ट ओके दे नो व्हाट द फैसिलिटेटर वांट्स टू हियर बट येट देर वर फ्यू एंड वन स्पेसिफिक विजुअल दैट इज देयर इन माय हेड राइट नाउ इज वन मैन ऑफ आई थिंक 45 45 एज अराउंड सो ही वाज वर्किंग लाइक दिस यस And he was saying yes, and this, and, and it's not his fault. It's no one's fault. That, that that's what came to me there. I thought, like how we have, uh, like we need to address this, this, and the mindset we need to address because the the uh, issue of patriarchy is well woven into the uh, minds of everyone that is there. so these were some incidents and a lot of conversations and lot of such incident incidents led me to think that um, that when we see when we say that um, like there has been some gender equality uh, like we have reached some gender equality uh, we are only looking at the enablement part uh, and uh, we are looking at and and even a lot of efforts are towards that that we are trying to enable women and which is very very important it is crucial and i agree that I agree to that and it is one of the initial steps towards empowerment but initial that's the keyword so we are uh, uh, a lot of work is being done for enablement and so looking at enable women we are deriving that we have reached a like gender equality but how i see it is only enabling women uh like helping them to be financially independent and all of that and uh, helping them uh, gain some skills uh, or 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 improve their skills or make uh, like help them get out their skills all of this is definitely helpful definitely important but it is um a uh, it is somewhat uh, it somewhat leads to over exploitation of women if we do not address the mindset part uh, it it only makes women more lucrative for the system at large uh, more hands to work uh, and like if, if uh, and and hence i feel that empowerment is this big circle and in it comes enablement which is a good portion of it but it is a portion of it it is the initial step towards it and we have a long long way to go because we are captured here we are uh, like our minds are in still in prison uh, us every everyone everyone the women uh, in question the the community everyone and uh, i feel that a, a lot of work uh, which is which is uh, also I, i could see that work also being done so i feel that a lot of work for the mindset shift to 
cultivate feminist values in people uh, needs to be addressed aggressively because without that enablement would only lead to uh, more bonded uh, labors out of women and and that is how it has been somewhat in the urban spaces why because in the urban spaces the enablement part has somewhat uh, uh, like a lot of effort has has been done there and uh, and now now i can like even in my office days i could see i could see that it was very evident to me how how the schedule of a uh woman looked and uh, how that of a man looked uh so yeah so that is one one key observation analysis for me um ashik could you move to the second slide yeah yeah also adding to that uh, i uh, this is this is very important so i am i do not want to miss this um i i feel that we need to put in more efforts and help women see their uh see themselves as valuable not because of their capabilities but see their value in because uh, like in being equal human beings uh, and that is that is one thing i would like to end this with uh, yes ashish please next thing. so i got into all of the whole journey and uh, i got to see a lot of things a lot of things were churning inside me also and uh, and and these were all live a livelihood that i could see and um, i um, and a lot of uh, new livelihoods which uh, which were there in front of me and um, and i i could and now i could i can choose from that uh, which which is uh, uh, like so for me a livelihood a live a livelihood which has uh, which have life at the center of it and where and when life when i say life it is nurturing a community uh, being in a community uh, like good for the self for your soul for your heart for your mind uh, good for the planet uh, in general keeping life at the center of it and not maybe growth not maybe profit um uh, yeah so th that is what a livelihood looks for me and it is um uh, it's a big realization because i'm coming from the it and i i have done i have done a, a livelihood and now i want to get into a livelihood um yeah ashish please next thing okay so <laughs> so i want you to look at the uh, picture tagged as before i want you to have a closer look at the expression that i have there uh so that is the picture i would resonate with earlier before this journey <laughs> like uh, my world limited to the laptop and my expression like this uh, and that is not to say that i did not i did not enjoy uh, like the the main thing about my work which is logic building uh, which I, because i am a software engineer i am a coder uh, i love that but but i did not like how it uh, limited me uh, and not the logic building part not the coding part not my work but how the job and the mainstream operate uh, and that's that expression i want you to, ha to have a good look at it <laughs> so that is how i resonate uh, i used to resonate with uh, before and now you can see after and that is after the journey i, I feel liberated i feel like a lot of options um, which i i never knew I the state are there in front of me and i i have a good sense of uh, myself obviously this is a journey which i'll be continuing uh, because uh, uh, it it needs more time uh, from uh, for me uh, but definitely i have a good sense of myself and uh, the a livelihood that i can pursue and and in general how the vibe if i may use the word the vibe is uh so that is the uh, uh after photograph uh yes ashik please yeah so so way forward so as a shared i got to see a lot of things and um, so my uh, so this collage i made because it's a, it's a symbolism of uh, like through my feet i'm sh i wanted to show that what all uh, not only landscapes but what all um spaces um i and what all 
my foot my feet have taken me to and through and um, and how uh, now like my shoulders feel responsibly heavy and my feet feel light um, as if they know uh, that in which direction they have to move now and they want to take faster uh, like they want to move faster and faster towards that um, and 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 that the philosophical side as uh, philosophical part aside uh, if i say that i i really want i really look uh, see myself as uh, as trying to explore the practical ways of um, of uh, of you know trying to bring about a mindset shift it could be through conversations it could be through any any uh, com- medium of communication workshops and i i I see myself designing all of that. I see myself uh, being part of that uh, because I really, truly believe in the power of conversations, a space for dialogue, and the work uh, and and the work uh, and the uh, things we can bring about from from addressing uh, or targeting mindset shift. And with that, I would also continue uh, my like my journey, my exploration and of self and self expression. um and uh, yeah so so that is how i look forward so that brings us to uh, the end of my presentation and uh, i would like to uh, uh, express my gratitude to uh, to the journey to the opportunity to all the people i met to all my parinde and uh, to all of you for uh, joining in and uh, uh, listening to me and uh, obviously Uh, uh last but not the least this community that i am now a part of uh, uh so yeah thank you thanks a lot yeah that was a wonderful from the heart sharing smriti thank you for that um yeah uh so since we had an internet problem in between and we have delayed a little uh the second presentation will do it from 11:50 uh but we we can we have about like 5 to 7 minutes for uh q and a in between uh, or if you would like to you know share something to smriti so you can like please unmute yourself and ask or like share Um, hi, Smriti. This is Bhomik. Hello, Bhomik. Hi. Thanks a lot for this wonderful presentation. It was really great to know about your journey. Um, I just wanted to understand, uh, and you may not have an answer right now. That's fine as well. Uh, when you say way forward, uh, what are you planning to do next? Like, are you planning to leave your IT job and do social service, or you think that you can still do your IT job, regular job, but just work around? uh in the social space like what what's what are your thoughts on that yeah uh thanks for us ask, asking this question um and it is a question i have been uh living with uh, all these months um so so i what i plan to do if if like i have to point that out and it would be definitely i want to um uh, like explore more into the um this workshop building and workshop uh, delivering workshops around this topic in different spaces in 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 uh, even in corporates i'm thinking of doing that uh, because like sexism sexism and patriarchy is everywhere uh, so that is one of the things in my mind and whether i go back to it or not it would be a completely uh, personal economical decision which i would take if if i need to later on but right now my focus is definitely going deeper into this uh, uh because i really i really see uh, a lot of potential in in uh, if if we address the mindset shift part and and with that uh, i have been working uh like without a break for a very long time so i would like to give myself a break for some time uh, a gap year in a true sense 
while that work would be going on because that does not feel like work for me so with that i would also uh, indulge in a lot of different um, hobbies and interests i had which I, i could never invest in because of how life has been how fast it has been uh, i i truly believe that uh, a human being is is not meant to do just one thing uh, i want to feel whole as a human being so i want to invest in all of like i want to fill colors in all of the uh, un- incomplete paintings that i have made uh, and my paintings it's metaphorical it's not literal uh, so throughout my life so that would be going on the personal side on the professional that is also professional that is also personal for me so that would also be going yeah, yeah that thank you wishing you all the best thank you thank you thank you pramik Hello, Shruti Di. I am Madan Mukari here. Can you hear Hello, me? Hello, hi. Yeah, yeah. My name is hi. My, my name is Madan Mukari. Uh, uh, Di, uh, can you tell me? Uh, can I speak in Hindi? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay. Di, आपने कई जगह घूमा. आपने अभी बताया इतने अच्छे तरीका से. इतने अच्छी तरीका से आपने बताया कि आपने क्या एक्सपीरियंस किया तो दी आ, मेरा ये थर्स क्वेश्चन कि इन सब चीजों को लेते हुए ये ये एक्सपीरियंस हम लोग को साझा करते हुए क्या अभी मेरे दिमाग में मेरे लिए भी ये क्वेश्चन है और मैं आपसे पूछना चाहता हूँ कि आपने इतना एक्सपीरियंस किया दी द पर्पज ऑफ ह्यूमन लाइफ हम लोग सब ह्यूमन है मतलब की हम लोग एक्सप्लोर करते जा रहे हैं एक बेसिकली हम लोग जीते हैं कमाते हैं खाते हैं और फिर मर जाते हैं उसके बीच में कई सारी घटनाएं होती हैं लेकिन जनरली इन सब चीजों में अपना इंटरेस्ट दिखाने वाले जैसे कि हम ट्रेवल्स यूनिवर्सिटी को जानते बहुत दिन से हम एक बार फॉर्म भी भरे थे इसमें फेलोशिप के लिए बैठ वे इंटरव्यू में मतलब की हम नहीं कर पाए थे एक भैया अश्विनी भैया से हमारी बातचीत होती थी अभी भी हम होती है तो आ, तो इन सब चीजों में इंटरेस्ट लेने वाले काफी कम लोग हैं हमारे समाज में मतलब जिनको देखो वो एक समाज का जो सिंपल सा ढांचा है खाओ पियो कमाओ मर जाओ खाओ खाओ पियो कमाओ मर जाओ तो आप इस लाइन में आई एक्सपीरियंस भी थी तो आपको मिला क्या ये पर्पज ऑफ लाइफ ह्यूमन लाइफ आपके आपके अनुसार आपके जीवन का मतलब उद्देश्य इतना एक्सप्लोर करने के बाद क्या है आप बता सकती हैं दैट्स अ वंडरफुल क्वेश्चन बहुत ही खूबसूरत सा सवाल है आपका तो तो मेरे लिए हमेशा से पर्पज ऑफ लाइफ एंड और इसी वजह से मैं खुद को थोड़ा मिसफिट पाती थी मेन स्ट्रीम जो हम कहते हैं उधर तो मेरे लिए हमेशा से ना लोग और रिलेशनशिप और कम्युनिटी और मतलब जो भाव होते हैं वो मेरे लिए हमेशा से सेंटर पे रहे हैं और तो हमेशा से मैं मतलब लाइफ मेरे हिसाब से ना ये भी है एक पॉइंट कि लाइफ का पर्पस ही क्यों बना रहे हैं हम क्यों नहीं जो हमारा दिल अभी जो अभी क्या जो हमारा दिल जिसके लिए महसूस करता है उसके टूवर्ड्स हम काम करते रहे तो मेरा दिल विमेन के लिए और विमेन राइट्स के लिए बहुत आ, बहुत धड़कता है और आ, और ये जो कम्युनिटी का जो फीलिंग है और आ, इसको सेंटर पे रखना मैं मेरी लाइफ को उसके अराउंड देखती हूँ हमेशा से ये था बट मुझे समझ नहीं आता था कि ये क्या है वो फीलिंग थी बट क्या है क्योंकि देखिए जैसे आपने बोला कि लोग कमाते हैं खाते हैं और ऐसे तो मेरे को ये भी क्योंकि मैं उधर उस दुनिया से भी आ रही हूँ तो मुझे समझ में आता है और ये मैं कहना चाहूंगी कि मतलब उधर भी अगर जो लोग ऐसा कर रहे हैं तो उन, मतलब उधर भी कोई गलत गलती नहीं है किसी की मुझे ऐसा लगता है कि उन्होंने मतलब जिन्होंने जो देखा होता है जितना पता होता है और डेफिनेटली यू कैन गो मतलब आप जा सकते हैं और और एक्सप्लोर कर सकते हैं बट जो जो अगर आप प्रॉपरली एक मेन स्ट्रीम लाइफ में घुसे हुए हैं और उस तरीके का जीवन आप जी रहे हैं तो बहुत सारे ऑपरेसर्स आपके ऊपर भी है और उनके दबाव में आके जितना आपने देखा है आप उसी में ही एक जिंदगी बनाने की कोशिश करते हैं तो और आई थिंक उसी चीज को ट्रेवलर्स यूनिवर्सिटी अपनी फेलोशिप के थ्रू एड्रेस भी कर रहे हैं 
कि जो लोग इस ऐसा महसूस कर रहे हैं और ऐसा है तो उन लोगों को एक आशा की किरण दिखे और अगर वो आशा की किरण उनको अपील करती है तो वो उस तरफ चल सकते हैं तो ये ये उधर का है बाकी पर्पज ऑफ लाइफ जैसे मैंने बताया कि जो आपका जो आपका दिल जिसके लिए बहुत ज्यादा धड़कता है आप उसको फॉलो करेंगे तो आपको कभी पर्पज ऑफ लाइफ मेरा ये मेरा मानना है आपको ये पर्पज ऑफ लाइफ ढूंढने का कभी जरूरत नहीं पड़ेगी क्योंकि आपका दिल पूरा पैशनेटली उस काम को करता जाएगा करता जाएगा और अगर आप उसमें इन्वेस्टेड हैं तो आपके जो रिलेशनशिप्स हैं जो कि मेरे हिसाब से कोर है रिलेशनशिप फीलिंग्स कम्युनिटी कोर है लाइफ की वो नर्चर भी होती जाएंगी तो आप खोएंगे नहीं तो मेरे ख्याल से अगर हम कहें मेरे को बातों बातों में ही लग रहा है कि पर्पज ऑफ लाइफ शायद ये है खुद को ना खोना तो इतने सारे रिफ्लेक्शन हो पूरी जन में बहुत सारी चीजें निकल के आई ये भी एक निकल के आया था रवि आपसे थैंक यू सो मच फॉर दिस क्वेश्चन आपसे बात करते हुए ये बहुत ऐसे अच्छे से निकल के आया क्लियरली मेरे लिए तो ये है तो हर इंसान अपना लाइफ का पर्पज खुद डिसाइड कर सकता है मेरे लिए मेरे हिसाब से ये है Thank you, Madan. Thank you, Thank you, Madan. Thank you, Smriti. Thank you, Madan. We will have to break for now uh, to move to the next presentation, uh, and we might need two to three minutes in between uh, for that. Um, yeah, and like Anjali has put in the comments, could someone give a rough translation of this question? Uh, so if it's so those who are in the zoom room if it's possible by any of you please do that we'll also try to see if we can do it more and um yes yes prati um thank you thank you thanks a lot everyone yes uh thank you we, we will need like 2 to 3 minutes for setup uh so please uh remain waiting and yeah thank you while we set up uh, for the next presentation while we are uh, i'll just like to share about uh, the idea of livelihoods which which forms the basic premise of the fellowship um, so livelihoods are the kind of livelihoods that make us feel alive from within as we are involved in it and 
uh, and are oriented towards social, ecological, and personal well-being. And through the fellowship, each fellow explores the livelihood that they wish to engage in in the long term. I think Ankita is ready. Yes. Hello, everyone. Uh, am I audible? Yes, yes, you are, Ankita. All right, so uh, thank you so much for joining. I see a lot of people who have joined and I feel very humble and excited to be sharing my journey and what I've learned with everyone who's here. Um, yes, so the uh, next fellow who will be presenting sharing about her journey is Ankita. Uh, Ankita is from uh, New Delhi, and through the fellowship, she has largely explored the area, the role of community in localized social ecological regeneration. So she took up the 52 part in the fellowship in an attempt to live slow and write slower. Uh, and during the last five months, Ankita has visited various community spaces across India that are driven by a common interest or a cause to understand the essence of community and participatory planning. Her fellowship exploration also took her to learn about the relevance of sustainable agriculture practices in the current industrial system. And she believes that growing one's own food is a most urgent act of political rebellion needed today. Over to you, Ankita. Yes. Thank you for, the, for that introduction, Ashik. Yeah, so that is how my journey of the past five months looks like. Um, I started my journey with uh, with an orientation in Tamil Nadu. Uh, I started with my first parinde in Telangana. Uh, and after visiting the different states, as you can see here, I am back in Andhra for the reflection workshop from where I'm sharing uh, this presentation today. So, uh, as mentioned earlier, the topic uh, uh, or the domain that I was interested in is the role of community or the role that community plays in uh, localized uh, regeneration, uh, like social and ecological regeneration that uh, uh, that can, that is possible in the current context that we are in. So if I begin with that, uh, that domain, the first question, the initial question that comes is community. Like, what is, what do I mean by community? What does a community mean? Uh, and why, uh, why is it that people are, um, uh, like, what is the importance that community holds in our life? Where all do we come across this word? So, so why is it that uh, people form communities? What role does it play in our lives? And then, uh, to the larger question, why I would like to explore communities. So, um, like, uh, if I have to talk about the term community, it's a very loosely defined word where even three people can form and call themselves or feel like they belong to a community and it can go as big as a nation or a state being uh, referred to as a community. Um, then communities can be... Uh, it's a uh, like people who feel that they're part of a community, like there are circumstantial communities. There are people who form a community on the basis of shared experience. There's the there's queer community. There's a community of a, of a village set up where people are, there's a geographical vicinity. So what is it that different, uh, what are the different meanings that people can hold for this particular term? Um, and uh, when we talk about like why I want to explore community, so uh, I come from a like I've been born and brought up in a city in in Delhi. And uh, when we when we try to 
find an image for what if when we think of the word city and try to come up with an image it's a uh, it's a tall building with a lot of apartments a lot of windows and a lot of isolated units i am i mean for me community would not be the first set of words that would come when i think about a city so when when i think about this concept this term i am not sure if i uh, i mean there's a sense of individualism there's a sense of ambition that we are raised with when we are born in a city uh, a sense of being a part of a rat race earning money getting going to college going to school getting into a career uh, earning money getting married being like that's a, that's a race that has already been set for us so there's no uh, sense of like e- even in school we start with from from the very beginning there's a competition there's a we we compete within a classroom at the end of school we compete in a comp- uh, for exams with other people like against other people there's no sense of collaboration there's no uh, teaching of how can i work along with someone else um, so there's a lack that i uh um that i would feel of not belonging to uh, to any space with a group of or to any group of people uh and uh, another reason is if there's a little activity that i would like you to participate for me uh, participate in for me uh, if you could in the chat box type the place right now you are in and maybe in the past half an hour or one hour you might have used water you know either gone and had uh, had a glass of water went went to the washroom been in the kitchen just like used water in some or the other way if you can uh, type the area where you are in and where if you know what water body that water came from in your tap if if you know if you could type that for me Okay, Weber says Borwell. Yes, says he doesn't know the source of his water supply. <laughs> This is not the water body. It's maybe the company who's selling it to you. right so uh, there's a sense of it, it's underground but uh, in a lot of uh, yeah so people who especially are writing that they are from the city uh, they might not have an idea of uh, where the water is coming from even if it's like someone said there is yamuna so river is like a law i mean it goes from like himalaya to like across so many states so where from yamuna and if someone um, even if like someone is sure of the particular canal the water is coming out of do what about the people living around the canal if we are taking their water in the city what water are they using so so uh, another another similar question is the if you could think about what you had for breakfast today and the ingredients that were used to make that breakfast where were they grown if someone knows that So whatever you had for breakfast and the ingredients, any vegetable you use for it, uh, rice, wheat, anything. If you know where it was grown. Right. So a lot of people know what they had, but it's difficult to trace it back to where it it came from. So there's a lack of uh, like water and food are the very basic uh, 
things we need to survive and we don't know where that comes from we just are the consumers of these things so there's no relationship that we have with even the basic things we need for survival and it comes a lot from how we grow up in a city so i would like you to hold on to this uh this particular thought while i go ahead with what i saw in community spaces and why i was referring to this particular aspect um Mm, I need to go next. Yeah, so uh, these like there are some of the communities that I visited. Uh, from how I conceptualize it, there are three kinds of places I got to visit. uh one uh, there are a lot of one is an intention driven physical community so there are a lot of people especially from uh especially who've been born and brought up in a city and they want to have uh, there there's something that makes them uh want to move out of a city uh, and have a physical space where they can call themselves as a community so i i uh, realized that there are a lot of such community spaces that exist in many parts of india and i wanted i was curious to know what is it that is making people uh, what is it that is driving them towards forming this community like going away from where they probably grew up and then having uh, feeling a sense of being in a community the other is village as a community that i explored where um, like a common understanding we have of uh, a rural village with with a cluster of uh, houses and uh, um, a lot of cases in a lot of cases that's an agricultural village uh, or a community so what is it what uh, inferences can i draw from seeing a community which is being created by people versus a community maybe which is uh, which has already been existing because people were born into that village born into those cultural beliefs and uh, uh cultural practices and how what can that a community that has been going on for a while can look like while uh, um when i keep uh, keep it like next to a community which is being created recently in the past maybe 10 to 12 years and the third is um, i was um, curious i think when we think about living in a community uh, the ideal uh image that comes to mind is of a native or an in indigenous tribe living uh, in um if we uh, around a forest with with some like being in sync with the nature of the forest around them unfortunately because of the um the limitation of uh, of my fellowship i could only go to a certain places and i could not cover as many tribal communities i would have liked to uh, there was one tribal community i could visit in maharashtra it was it had a slightly different context because uh, the community had was not living um, like it was not so dependent on forest and it ha it was largely it is largely now an agricultural based community because it has like moved out of the forest and the agriculture has become a livelihood for them i'll be sharing more about it like later so when i start started looking at a community these are the aspects i could uh, understand uh, uh, a common uh, like uh, an assumption i went with is that uh, why are people uh, i mean what is it that is making people be a part of a community and uh, what what it might mean and uh, i was looking at community as the end as the goal that once we are a part of that that is uh, like that is the aim the very formation of community is the aim of the community but i realized over my travel that um, community is not a goal but a means and uh, if it is a means then there's an intention there's a goal to it and that one key realization is what made me uh, rethink my entire journey i started looking with one sort of assumption and then it completely changed uh, how uh, and even introduced this part of intention so in most in all of the communities uh, i i visited there was an uh, there was a common intention that was uh, that people or the community members had arrived at this intention uh, also like unite the people who are involved um, all of them like all the people involved are working towards one common intention and uh, so but it is not only a common uh, 
purpose for to to full to be fulfilled uh, fulfilled for the community but there's also a personal aspect a personal need or a personal aspiration that is being fulfilled while uh, while people are working towards that intention now that intention can be uh, it was action oriented as in people are coming together to uh, uh, to work towards an action towards uh, to work towards something uh, some tangible action they have in mind um two very good examples are uh, yadum uh, yadum community in madurai uh, so yadum is a natural store like it uh, in the middle picture um, uh, you can see a variety of natural pro uh, products they offer uh, and this is a community of producers who are uh, making value added products or making uh, who are processing raw materials or um, um, you hand even handicraft there is also uh, farmers are also part of this community farmers are growing uh, organically without using any uh, chemicals um, and um, then there are uh, two individuals involved or two uh, families involved who are doing sustainable packaging so if a product is coming instead of uh, selling with them into uh, in plastic packing uh, they are selling using cloth bag using paper packing to do that and trying to come up with constantly come up with uh, or innovating new ways of uh, cheaper and more sustainable ways of packaging uh, then there's the consumer or the families uh, the people who are going to the store to buy it so all of them have are a part of this community and the action that brings them together the intention that they have set is uh, to work towards a healthy life a healthy lifestyle healthy having healthy food uh, and that includes a healthy environment um, where uh, uh the land is not infused with chemicals for farming but uh, even the health of the land is maintained while food is being being grown on it for for us to consume um the other action oriented uh, community i visited was in kochi it's called bhumi learning center uh, so it's a community of parents and kids who uh, where the main intention of them to come together is to um educate their kids so these kids do not go to to mainstream schools uh, they are home schooled uh, by the parents uh, but this is not only one like the parent teaching the kid uh, a kid learns from from peers from other people so it's a and to home school a kid is a very like to home school their kids is a very uh, it's a it, it cannot be a lonely process people like parents need other parents to support them through the anxieties they might have through what they are doing and even the kids need a peer group to uh, to meet and to learn from so this community came together to educate their kids through alternative methods of education through homeschooling and what was interesting here is that uh, so they have a space that they have rented in kochi where parents uh, so there is no external facilitator there are parents only with their varied hobbies or interests spend time at the learning center give a few hours uh, uh, each week to uh, uh, to to engage with the kids to, to uh, organize different activities for them uh, and they they are not teachers they are facilitators or they are there to just see that the environment is safe so if you see in the right picture is the kids will build like a whole whole um, uh, civilization or a city around them and uh, i was very interested in how creative they were in using like simple wood blocks to to build things they probably have seen around in in the place they live in uh, and an important aspect like an interesting part was that they don't see the learning center as a learning center for kids it's also for parents because to work or to operate or to function in a community is a very there's a lot of unlearning there's a lot of mindset shift that needs to happen because we since we are like uh, since we go to school and since we are born we have always learned how to uh, how to listen to we are trained how to listen to someone else's instruction to work under someone else it in in a college or a school there's a teacher to tell us what to do which period is for what subject in in an office uh, there's a there's a boss uh, or a senior who has to be above us to tell us what to do so there is we forget how to self organize ourselves how to keep ourselves motivated with an internal having like an internal motivation to do it instead of looking for some external validation or a reason to make us do something so even for the parents it's an unlearning it's a it's a process of learning how to not be um, given a responsibility but to take the responsibility so there is no person who comes to the center to clean it 
to to run it the everyday logistics the account um, everything is organized by the parents themselves so they take up the initiative to to run the whole center and that that is it's an another like a great example of an action oriented um, community uh, other kinds of communities i visited were um, social uh, like people who are working who are who are spiritually inclined where all of them are working towards the towards the uh, towards the inward uh, journey towards making themselves realize their true potential and then working doing that with the intention that once we are in harmony once once the once the individual is uh, is um, has clarity of thought has uh, has uh, realized what they want to do in life that can then in effect uh, impact the impact not only other people but impact the surrounding communities uh, that is how they can contribute to society so it's not only a only a self interested uh, intention but also to uh, the uh, the uh, aim is to also contribute to society and the third is where uh, the intention begins like the very intention with which a community is founded is for some social cultural political uh, um uh issue some some political injustice or social injustice that uh, which they want to address and uh, an example of that is um, something that i'll be talking about later kheti india and design jatra um so um in this um uh, so uh, more on that later then i will shift to the other aspect which is the personal aspect so when i went to any community space i i would largely look for these three things and then there would be so many sub points that would come under in the under each of these aspects uh, i think one of the places where i learned the most about personal aspect is anga um thinking about how an individual is operating within a community it is not only how the community is serving the or uh, like the bad of the individual really that it is it it will have that what is it that is king uh, um uh, see uh, uh, how they it doesn't within the for the ad uh, how are, if there's a need for community gathering happen how are those facilitated uh, how um there was a i mean it was coming out to like even if two people meet there there's some sort of, uh, that can happen very easily we, there's some conflict that is some power dynamic uh so in uh, uh, like two people a group of people trying to do something uh, hello hello ankita the your voice is breaking uh, so can you just check your mic once okay is it uh, can you speak now uh, i have a is it better no no it's breaking uh, okay. can you just try changing the microphone once uh, to the computer since you're already close to a laptop currently yeah um, is this uh, better now yes yes this is great yeah okay thank you um you might have to repeat from the personal aspect uh, like we got lost got it. Yeah. okay so uh, i uh, so when i when i was visiting new community space these are the th largely the three aspects which i would uh, look at uh, to understand how a community is working largely uh, along with the common intention that is bringing people together uh, i was in interested in knowing how the not only how the individual is contributing to the community but how the community or the is impacting uh, an individual's life their individual uh, uh, their their self understanding their uh, like um, 
so so how how is the community informing or enabling the self uh, and then the other and the other was uh, how what relationships uh, people have with one another uh, how is it that they came together uh, what made them sure that we want to we want to call ourselves or feel that we belong to this particular community we don't we uh, i mean uh, a lot of people who live in the city i am not i mean i have never felt that the neighbors i have in my apartment are i don't feel that they are a part of my community they are, i don't feel get a community feeling from the people living like just two, uh, two houses away from me or even in the next house so what is it that makes people get that feeling of community um uh, and then when people indeed are a part of a community space uh there i mean uh i was coming from a uh, i ha i had the curiosity to understand how is it that people um balance the private or the personal with the community self the uh, the need for uh, uh, for a private space uh, or or a personal space to uh, to the community space um the uh, i was curious about how if one person uh, if like even when there are two people there is a lot in a lot of cases uh, there is friction there there are differences that can come up there are uh, uh, power dynamics that start operating so if there are so many people who are trying to do the same thing together how is it possible to do it with consensus with some sort of harmony and so this sort of conflict resolution is what i was interested in knowing how if there's a community gathering happening who facilitates is how do we ensure if everyone gets a chance to to speak up if if someone doesn't agree what uh, uh how i like what happens does someone have to compromise do does no action take place like how how that sort of communication can look like so and a space that really helped me understand that was um anhad yeah so anhad is a community space in telangana and um it's a uh, like around 14 people are living on on a piece of land that where they have built uh, um sustainable like they have used sustainable material to build their houses a community center a community hall uh, and um, here i uh, not only got to uh, learn about the personal aspect but also um i mean as part of the personal aspect how important the space of a community is to like what can a place look like where uh, we we have more interaction where we feel that we don't feel isolated so uh, how like how points of interaction can be designed in a community space in a physical community uh, i think i got to observe that and the impact of that um then another thing that i like um for a community to communicate interact and then also evolve and like not be st stagnant there are gatherings there are points again another not a physical uh, i mean it, within physical points of interaction there's not only the architectural or the space point uh, point but also like a place where people are coming together to communicate so uh, in in case of anhad they meet every friday 6 in the morning to discuss like have alternative meetings where uh, in one meeting there are they have like a they focus more on their self or individual concerns what is bothering them what they want to grow uh, which aspect of the individual they want to uh, work on how the community is helping them do that uh, and how, or, or enabling them to do that and then the other is the community concern that they take up there are different initiatives that the community runs to financially sustain themselves so if there are uh, logistics to be figured out how uh, so they have uh, they are um, planning to start with the natural farming initiative and they already have an eco architecture initiative that has been running for the past few years and how with two uh, and it's the same community members who uh, who are um, a part of this initiative uh, and how if there are logistics to be figured out how work can how work can be done not to get the work done but also to um uh, to make the person feel at ease uh, at peace make them uh, enable them to work towards their purpose their potential so how uh, so so along with the individual the work they are doing the impact they have on the community all are all these are things that they are discussed uh, every week to to ensure that everyone is on the same page to ensure if there are any concerns coming up they don't get 
bottled up but do come out in a safer space where people have a dialogue um Uh, so after the, if I go back to this slide, after the personal aspect, uh, I was, uh, the, I mean, not after, but along with the personal aspect, when I would also look at the contextual aspect, this would include understanding how the community is not working. The community does not mean it's limited to that boundary, but what is the relationship that it has with with the issues happening around around them, with the with the natural environment that they are a part of, with the uh, surrounding communities and people outside of this physical community space. So how that um, how that sort of context is uh, uh, how how that relationship of the community looks like. And as I moved ahead with my journey, I felt that uh, my interest was going. I was going more like was inclined more towards the contextual because uh, I realized that most of the communities I was visiting uh, had uh, had people who had reached a certain stage of life where they are they are stable looking looking for some sort of settlement they are married and have kids and kids would often become a reason their well-being their upbringing and their education would often become a reason for people to to be a part of uh, and uh, function as a community so that was true in case of mostly in case of anha that was true in case of bhumi in even in case of yadomina uh, for for a lot of people so i was not sure if how i could find my personal um, uh, how uh, although these spaces have been very welcoming i was struggling to understand how i can be a part of this space uh, how uh, if 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 an individual woman wants to be a part of a community how that can look like and uh, and so uh, i was uh, getting a little more interested in understanding the role the relationship of the community with with the with the surroundings with, with the context that they are a part of um, and uh, one of the examples I would like to bring is Kheti India. So this is a this is an organization or an initiative being run in uh, in the Lucky Sarai district of Bihar. Uh, they uh, they have a, uh, they practice agroforestry on the two pieces patches of land that they have, and working along with the other farmers in their village who are currently practicing traditional uh, ways of farming to to encourage them mobilize them work with them so that they can get the support to um, gradually move to a, a less harmful way of practicing this harm is not only to the land to the surroundings to the nature uh, to nature but also to their own health to their nutrition level so um, these two photographs if you could see you uh, the the surrounding land there's a one dense forest like p uh, um, piece of land you could see in both pictures uh, and how that looks like in the middle of a huge uh, in the middle of land where only traditional ways of farming are uh, being practiced so uh, other so all the empty patches you see right now uh, so the uh, rice had just been harvested uh, and the land was uh, clear and people were preparing for the next season of sowing wheat so in between so the whole land is used to grow one single crop and then once that is done then they move to another the next crop uh, to be continued for the next the next season, which is basically monocropping, and then there's a heavy reliance on chemicals to uh, to ensure that there's a good harvest. So um, if like so, the uh, option of choosing agroforestry where there's a uh, where there's not only one crop that is grown, but um, but multiple, uh, but there's a biodiversity that is maintained. Uh, there's uh, and there is no use of chemicals. There's there's cow dung, gaumutra, jeevamritam that are used to uh, to uh, to improve the fertility of land instead of uh, uh, using chemical fertilizers. Uh, this uh, there are a lot of observations that I could that I was like uh, I made and I was told about how um, I mean even if if I go when I touch the soil soil in the in this patch where there's agroforestry being uh, being practiced uh, it it was soft it was darker it was nice to feel and then i went to the next patch there's just a line of uh, it's like right adjacent to that uh, to this patch and it was dry it was hard i could not hold it and like break it easily so um, it it like 
it created an impact of how uh, like if we go on to imagine the kind of food that we are having that is being grown on this land what it might be doing to my to to our health to our bodies and to nature that i could obviously see here to to the soil to the land so um, in this case uh, the the cultural uh, the contextual aspect that i'm bringing is uh, how their uh, the the reason why this was founded uh, or this initiate uh, initiative was started was to um uh, so um, as farming is not supposed to be an uh, an activity to be done alone it's done in a community it's done as a collective it's done with people uh, so so in a, in our village a lot of people come together and work on each piece of land when there's a harvest or a sowing happening it's not a single person's responsibility uh, that the traditionally would be practiced but now it has become a one farmer or one family one land uh, practice so um, Virgin farming being uh, so it's difficult to separate community the aspect of community from farming, and uh, so it's not uh, that is like one way in which I could connect community to farming, and the other is in in a in an environment where um, where company where corporates and governments are pushing farmers to and and uh, me creating an environment where it's uh, where it's very difficult to I mean farmers don't uh, it. they don't feel like they have a choice of not buying the fertilizers available in the market it is not helping them financially i i spoke to a few farmers uh, in in this village uh, so it's not that the harvest is better or the money is better it is they are still going in debt but still there is a there's a uh, there's an inhibition there's a mindset uh, uh, shift that is uh, that needs to happen uh, to to enable these farmers to shift to uh, you know to a more uh, natural farming or even agroforestry so uh, this 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 sort of work can only be done when farmers together in a village uh, see each, each other's work see how uh, uh, if if something was successful in some other person's land then they also feel encouraged like one the other farmer would feel encouraged to grow that and try that on their land so there it it happens in a community it happens as a collective where there's knowledge sharing there's uh, um uh, uh, there's a an, uh, knowledge and resource sharing uh, so that is one um, reason why uh, kheti india is working at the community level to work with along with farmers so uh, the person in the photo is swati she and her brother together work uh, they are the founders of kheti india and they work along they are in touch with the farmers in the village and constantly uh, uh, even if people are even if the farmers are feeling inhibited to to uh, to experiment on their land uh, they have started with the initiative of uh, encouraging farmers to grow their own vegetables in their kitchen backyard uh, so that at least their nutrition levels are fulfilled because right now food is only seen as rice and the roti that we eat not in terms of what fruits or vegetables we are consuming uh, particularly true in in the case of this village uh, so covid helped them realign the as the focus of nutrition and health uh, in their initiative and once the once the farmers feel more confident about that we can grow food without uh, um um without having a loss or feeling confident that the land uh, that we can grow without using chemicals we can grow on land then they feel more confident to take this to the bigger like the to their bigger farm um the other uh, when i speak about how communities are um, what relationship they have with their context another a community uh, another initiative i visited is uh, design jatra it is in morbar in maharashtra so it's an initiative uh, where which started uh, it's it was founded by three architects um, one of them is pratik who is in the second picture in the white shirt and in the extreme left of the picture so uh, because when when they started to uh, so uh, this village is where is pratik's ancestral village and uh, as from the perspective of an architect he started by working in this village by encouraging people to uh, uh, continue with the traditional ways of architecture of, of building their houses instead of the um instead of the techniques of like using using cement and brick um that was being pushed by 
the gram sabha and in general the corporate lobbies and the government um, so how uh, so it started with that but then it went on to uh, then then he started uh, he and his, in the initiative started working towards um uh, agroforest um, sorry towards uh, forest uh, biodiversity conservation of forest because if we are to build houses using timber and mud there should be good quality mud there should be variety of timber but in the forest surrounding their village there is only um, a single uh, like teak wood that is being grown by the government like teak wood plantation that uh, that means uh, the biodiversity of that forest is eventually dip, like gradually depleting and there are no tigers in that forest at this point so to con uh, to work on the conservation of the of the ecology of that village which includes uh, working on the water crisis in that village why that is happening and uh, the reason for that would be um um uh, kind of again the same farming practices that the uh, of of monocropping of using chemicals that people uh, that the farmers there have so how that affects the water crisis and how so he started then working on organic farming uh, practicing that on his own land and encouraging people again to have kitchen gardens where uh, e even if people don't feel even if the farmers are not feeling comfortable with um experimenting on their farmland they can at least begin with kitchen garden uh, and eventually now now he is also working at the level of local governance of how um to strengthen the community in that village um there's uh, uh, there's a uh, like a policy uh, called the para scheme where uh, the villagers have get a small fund and they collectively decide uh where they want to spend that fund on so more than the amount of the fund what is important is the villagers coming together and deciding together so the aspect of participatory planning uh, of taking a decision on what this money should be spent on should it be spent on digging a well or putting on solar lights or or putting on a or installing a garbage bin so um so uh, this was a uh, a great learning and a great example for me to understand how a not only other issues interconnected but um, like when we enter start working in a context we, there are uh, um, we we might start with one context with one social injustice or with one political injustice but we start but there are then one link, links to the other architecture or natural building linked to ecological conservation linked to livelihoods currently they uh, they are working on the lively uh, they, they are using bamboo craft that the, the skill that Uh, many local villagers have uh, to help them get livelihood have a have an income where the for, villager is not forced to migrate if they have the wish to migrate to a city then that is their choice but if they do not wish to they should have an option to uh, so that the village can sustain them ec uh, economically and they can live there um so um, yeah so it can begin with any one issue but then go goes to how the aspect of a community is important to do that uh, the the lens i i felt that he was operating from is again community community entered all these aspects he was trying to address and then uh, then they it is very difficult to uh, work on the any social co uh, issue or any injustice without entering the governance part of it the governance level of it so how eventually i like that that journey of uh interconnectedness of how the governance is a part of um uh you know uh, how community can be linked to governance and and these other aspects i think that was a learning for me from this uh from this particular initiative so um so uh bringing so the uh, in the beginning of the presentation when i talked about how water and uh, we don't know where our water or where our food is coming from so i realized that a community space in most of the spaces where i'm visiting uh, we have with food with our water with with our natural surroundings uh, that is getting rebuilt or regenerated and unless we have this um, so community uh, space enabling us to rebuild that relationship i felt that that is the uh, that is what is needed 
if we have to if we are thinking about working towards uh, environmental conservation because until we have a relationship until we stop seeing nature as a resource water as a resource land as a resource uh, uh, which cannot happen if we don't know where our food and water are coming from we cannot have a relationship and we cannot think about working on climate change working on in, on the environment and i think that is how community when i started looking at community it led me to connect to the uh, social ecological regeneration that that i have been speaking about and so in these two examples like uh, on the left there's uh, at uh, this is at anhad where uh, every day at 4 o'clock in the afternoon everyone who can possibly come to, uh, who who's free or is there um, uh, and like in their house can uh, who's free comes out to to farm to prune the forest to take care of you know which uh, tree needs caring and so that not only becomes a point of community interaction like i mentioned previously but also uh, most of the these communities i visited they have they are growing their own food they are working on self sufficiency uh, they are working on fulfilling or uh, all their basic needs from water to to food to shelter to education um uh, from that from that community so uh, they are growing their own food they are uh, so, some of the things only come from the outside um uh, education is being uh, nature plays a role in the education of not only the kids but uh, the parents or the adults who are living in that community uh, and and it, i'm using anad as an example but i realize this even uh, like this relationship with our food is also true for yadum where again they are working on a healthy life and a healthy being that we can have through by rebuilding our relationship or uh, working on a relationship with nature um so um farming ended up becoming or growing our, our own food became a common activity or a theme that i noticed in uh, most of the communities i visited um, so which is uh, why i would like to then talk about uh, uh, how um, what i noticed about the uh, climate resilient farming that is um, Uh, how we can support that that and what challenges uh, essentially are cu currently a lot of farmers facing at least from the learning that i had um so um a lot of people from the villages are migrating to urban spaces to nearby towns and cities there's an urban aspiration that uh, that is conditioned because of the kind of exposure we have uh, and uh, we we even we like we see farming as a less dignified or an undignified livelihood and very rarely are there farmers who want their kids to also become farmers it's not financially sustainable anymore it's not dignified anymore so a lot of people are selling their land and moving to the cities which is yes we are back uh yeah, yeah. um ashik can you help me with where i should re uh, restart uh from the challenges uh like we lost uh, like we closed for about like 30 seconds 30 40 seconds we were not unable okay okay so i should give the migration uh, yeah, migration yeah. point yes okay. yes so uh, i was speaking about the kind of challenges i noticed that are currently in uh, that are currently like that hold true in uh, among a lot of farmers in india who are um, who depend on farming for their livelihood um so one the first point i uh, 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 one of the biggest trends that i have noticed 
is the issue of migration so a lot of people uh, a lot of farmers uh, or farmers families are mig- le- leaving behind their land uh, abandoning it selling it um, and moving to the cities to the nearby towns and cities to earn, uh, to become uh, to join as laborers as migrant laborers and um, which again uh, forces them into a cycle of you know exploitative uh, exploited labor um and uh, there's like we look at farming as uh, uh, like farming is looked at as an undignified or a less dignified livelihood it's not financially sustainable for the people practicing it so uh, uh, even if there's a possibility of working with the farmers to support them in uh, moving out of the chemical based farming that is being practiced there are if there are people migrating and selling their land then that becomes a bigger ch- a, a big challenge to um uh, come out of uh, then the other is of course the government policies and the corporate lobbies who are pushing governments to uh, to uh, to push for more uh, more chemicals uh, uh, even even the agricultural institutes that are there in india their their education the courses that these institutions have Uh, are about how technology how some advanced chemical or 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 some new companies fertilizer can be used to to change the you know uh, to be uh, and that is seen as modern farming and how that can help the agricultural crisis apparently that india has but uh, there is no uh, there's rarely any reference to um, to the um, to natural ways of farming to uh, to the to the environmental um, Uh, to the unsustainability of the farming practices that we have uh, in bihar i also learned that uh, there are fertilizer uh, even though there's a massive push towards fertilizers as a system uh, there's a shortage of the raw material that are used to make fertilizers which is why the prices are con- continuously increasing which is why sri lanka um, went into a, an economic crisis and although uh, and and so if we uh and so uh the dependence on fertilizer if that does not stop there is uh i mean a, a similar crisis is something that we can also face somewhere in the future so it is not unsustain uh dependence on chemical fertilizers is not only unsustainable for unsustainable in the sense that it's harmful for the land or the soil it's also unsustainable in the sense in a few years it's uh, the land is going to be uh there are, uh, i mean the efficiency of fertilizer has de- decreased the prices of the these chemicals have increased uh, uh there's a huge demand but a very short uh, supply of this so uh, eventually there are other solutions other uh, alternatives we have to look for um other than that again the point that i made with the when i linked this to community uh, uh unless there is knowledge sharing resource sharing uh, support of farmers together to uh, uh, and then a support of the local market so if in a village for so many years only and rice are being sold even if someone is to start growing bamboo start growing bananas um, um, i mean some of these can be sold in the local market but uh, uh, like the local the, the traders available to buy in bulk are only for the mono crops that are being grown in the village so unless there's a there are a huge number of farmers growing certain then crops the the market will not be able to support that uh, and then the farmer will eventually have no option but to again go back to the same two crops he's been growing uh, they have been growing so um, uh, that is why support of the ecosystem a support of other stakeholders within agriculture are also needed for um, for this uh, for us to have a more climate uh, resilient farming um yeah uh, finally uh, the challenges within my uh, the domain i was exploring i faced so one uh, i i observed uh, one is the uh, like i have divided that into two one of the challenges in setting up a community so it for for a person who's um, brought up to think about uh, to pursue individualism to pursue their career and to pursue only money uh, money money as as some sort of end um individual as a sign of uh, 
health living or um, competition as the basis of working then uh, it's difficult i mean then that mindset is uh, difficult to uh, sustain a community so for a com for people who are uh, i mean i could not visit a lot of community farms because people or the founders shared how uh, even if someone comes there's a lot of um, uh, it, it takes time for um, for that group of people to resonate to feel that they can work together and uh, and for them to even feel that they can work in or or live in a community so mindset shift is a long process and uh, that is one of the challenges that while forming or setting up a community that that comes up uh, the other is um, again like um, looking like what uh, how to establish a community where we have where we don't isolate the others out uh, so uh, in in case of yadom in madurai uh, i understood how yadom it was described as um how yadom is a is a network of other networks so how it's important to for any community to be in uh, in relationship with other communities with other networks there uh, so that there's resource sharing there's uh, uh knowledge exchange there's um uh, we don't like isolate ourselves and form like a, a world only to serve us um and then uh, like finally like the gaps in forming intentional communities or even in uh, just how we can uh, even if we are to so having talked about how community can be uh, can lead towards a more empathetic uh, sensitive sustainable life um, there are a lot of challenges in imagining ourselves uh, or imagining uh, Um, a community space like that there is uh, i mean in in our today's context it's not uh, it's not simple to say i mean it's not a simple solution to to present that we should go back to how uh, and uh, how indigenous tribes have been living it uh, we can't simply go back so how is it that we can how can we make it possible for us in our current context to work towards building a community i also came across a lot of communities within urban spaces within within urban colonies where again not apartments uh, uh apartments are, uh, are are designed to not, to not make us work like a community but urban colonies where there are people coming together with an intention where they have a community guideline where they where there's a common kitchen where the people come together to uh, to cook to set up some uh, means of communication having community gatherings so it is not that a community can be imagined only in a rural setup or only if we find uh, uh find enough capital to sustain ourselves out of where we are living uh, but also uh, i mean that's still a search i am on on how different community spaces can be imagined in different contexts and with that the way forward uh, i mean from my journey i have come to realize how much something that even i shared in my bio how much farming not farming growing my own food is the is a very urgent or a very important political act uh, an act of rebellion where we say where we do not allow the market we do not allow the government's uh, agenda to uh we we do not uh, allow that to come into our lives we take care of our own health we um i mean uh, we, we do not allow the market and the government to uh to uh, sort of uh, affect our health we um uh, and also if we have to work towards climate uh, towards mitigating climate change towards environmental conservation that is where uh, uh that is where uh, a change of mindset a change of looking at the health of our environment of ourselves can um uh, that is where that the whole uh, whole chain of events and a chain of progress can come and i see myself after this fellowship working uh not only learning how to grow my own food but working with collectives with communities of farmers so that uh, where where i can understand how i can offer my uh how i can contribute towards um towards a more climate resilient towards a more sustainable farming uh that is the a livelihood that i see for myself where i uh where i don't see it as a job but something that makes me feel uh makes me feel alive makes me feel uh, uh like uh i have a role to play in this world thank you for listening
Thank you, Ankita, for that detailed sharing of your fellowship journey. Um, we can uh, take a few questions uh, from the audience. We all we already have a question in the comments. Uh, it is from Maya Sharma. Does organic farming give the same quantity per acre? Markets also demand better, big-looking vegetables, cotton, etc. So do you have? Yeah. So. Uh... I'm not sure how fit I feel to be answering this. I'm not a practicing farmer and I've only been in this journey for five months. But, but from what I've understood, uh, a chemical dependent farming is actually leading to more inefficiency. Uh, like I shared, uh, the um, even for the fertilizer to work, there's a certain condition of soil that is required, which is only deteriorating over time. So even the fertilizer every year, uh, and I, I learned this from most farmers that I talked to, every year the amount of fertilizer they need to buy is only increasing. So the input cost is only increasing. So in that case, the harvest is coming down um, and uh, the input cost is, is more. So I don't see this as being any way comparable to organic or natural farming uh, and, and there have also been instances where people where farmers have shared that when they did not use chemicals the vegetables were bigger they were more uh, yeah like they were heavier and bigger as a, as a harvest as compared to when they were using uh, chemicals so there's also uh, uh, i think it's a myth that you d we are depending on chemicals because there's a demand in the market uh, i feel uh, uh, I don't feel that is true. Okay. Uh, there's a comment from someone. Uh, the name is not clear. The question is, uh, through your travels, did you feel there was a sense of prejudice against these communities? Um. Mm. I mean, I feel even I went uh, with a, um, uh, I mean, even I was going with some sort of assumption or prejudice to um, to sort of, uh, because, uh, because I did notice uh, bias, okay. Um, I feel that if we look at it only from the outside and not, Try to understand what the intention behind the community is, what they are, what action they are trying to take. Uh, there's a sense of bias or prejudice that can come everywhere. It's true. This nature of our of of our thinking is is true in every sort of scenario. So sometimes even I would have a lot of biases or a lot of questions about if I feel this is the right way to uh, if if you know separating from our previous life and creating a new community away from the previous context if that is the solution that i would like to think for myself um or or how sustainable that is but there are uh, uh, i mean i feel that uh, there are there's no no one solution there are people from their own context from their own understanding they are trying to work towards something and as far as there's an intention even if there's no perfect solution that i could find no perfect community that i could find uh, so in that way um, um, uh, every community trying to uh, um, deal with what they are going through trying to uh, address the concerns the injustices that they see around i think is a um, sort of good enough community yes thanks shavi for that question and kritika is asking what's your biggest takeaway from the fellowship <laughs> mm. Okay, so for that, I can go back to my presentation. So if I was not, if I were not in this fellowship, these words, um, even I can't see the words. Yeah, the word, any of the words that are right now being 
put next to my name be it community be it regeneration um so, social or ecology it would not uh, i would not not have imagined these these words being written next to my name the importance uh, of uh, or even the relevance of what these words mean i think each of uh, all of that has been a takeaway for me and um the biggest takeaway like i shared i think i did not begin by looking at farming as one of the central areas of interest or domains i was exploring but they ended up uh, like i ended up realizing how uh, how distant i am from the food i am eating from the water i am drinking from uh, I, I, if i have i if i go out and look at a forest or a tree it only comes as comes up like in a romantic idea of how this looks green and pretty it would i would not understand what uh um what uh, like what the the relevance that a native species has of being grown in that place the um the effect, the impact that these uh, the ways in which our nature uh, land um soil or our food is how they are being treated and may, may being made into products of consumption uh, for our needs i think i had an understanding of that but uh, which again is another takeaway i realized the importance of experience of going something and seeing that and experiencing for myself or using my my hand to uh, like to to dig up a soil to plant a, to plant something plant a seed and then that is what made uh made more impact than what i had heard in classrooms before about what is happening with with our environment or with um with like in general about social injustice okay uh, we have one more question from meka and i think this will be the last question that we take before we close today's session Uh, Mega asks, after this exploration, now what is your point of view that a community should be and you want to create or be part of? <laughs> um, I know I was looking for a perfect community, but I did not find it. So I don't think there is one. Um, a community for a community I would like to be a part of. Um, um, something that enables. Helps me to, uh, uh, I mean, or, or supports me in doing what I want to do instead of pressurizing me to do something uh, um, where I am not seen as a person to earn money, but a person to live my life, to um, to to have to to go out on a walk, have an open sky in the morning to look at, uh, have have time to soak the sun in the morning instead of getting ready to leave for work. um to to work along with people and um uh, in the process learning how how i can be a creative person how i can be a person to contribute instead of only being seen as a resource to earn uh, or to live wake up have a job and then go to sleep so the community i imagine is definitely not in a city so if my parents are watching they should be worried Okay, someone resonates to that. Anjali comments, "That's my sort of community," and I'm sure, like many more people, resonate to that idea, that wonderful thought that you just shared, Ankita. And with that, we close uh, today's presentation, the day two of uh, our fellows sharing insights, learnings from their fellowship journey. Uh, we invite you to join us tomorrow as well the last uh, day of the presentation where two of our fellows kavya and lalita will be sharing about their journeys uh, kavya's area of exploration uh, through the fellowship was community intervention ideologies within the socio cultural narrative and lalita explored the area of food systems forest and livelihoods we invite all of you to join us tomorrow as well and thank you thank you everyone thank you so much for being here thank you for everyone who joined and for listening to me <laughs>